Hi guys, it's Finavar here and welcome to the first ever Finavar Creative Team YouTube Hop. I hope you will be inspired watching our videos and just to let you know the topic is art to go. So we are going to focus on the things that you can do with different kind of packaging. For example, this is the outer tin I made just for you, so make sure you will watch the whole tutorial and make sure you're going to read the instruction below because this is the way you can win some really nice prizes. Visit all the videos, leave the comments, send some love and have fun! Our topic is art to go, so something that it is uh, based on idea of having our art portable, easy to take with us anywhere we go or with uh, packaging that is going to be included in the project. I found this very cool packaging on the flea market also, or as you call it here, carpet sale. And I'm planning to turn this beautiful tin into nice altered object. My plan is to decorate the top just a little bit. I love how rusty the edges are. I don't want to cover that. And I love how beautiful this background is. It's just perfect as it is, so I don't want to cover that too much. However, I would like to cover that part. My first step is going to be adding some white gesso on the top of my tin, so I will have this design that is here removed. And uh, later I will go to the inside and I will protect the inside using clear gesso. What I'm using is heavy gesso I made for Primo marketing. This one is uh, quite thick. So if you feel that you would like to get a little bit more of the uh, creamy consistency to it, you can just add some water. You can see it's almost like paste. But for me, this is not a problem. I'm going to cover the top with probably two coats of the white gesso, and then I will see if this is enough. Gesso is great for uh, making your surface ready. So now here the tin will accept the paints or inks or waxes much better, but also it is great way to make the surface less slippery, which is important when you work on the glass or on the metal. Now I'm going to put the second coat of the white dresser. Now I'm changing my gesso to clear gesso. This is going to be completely transparent and matte after drying. So I will cover the inside and the sides of my tin with this gesso to make sure it's going to be ready to accept uh, my next layers. I will also protect this background just to make sure this is uh, going to uh, be with a matte finish so I will be able to stick my layers better. My gesso is dry now, so I can start working on the compositions if I would like to. I don't want to put too much on the um, inside on, uh, of the tin here. And I would like to have the front really uh, flat comparing to what I will build here inside. I've got my 3D gloss gel, which I will use for gluing down some of the first elements. One of them is this piece of beautiful lace that is going to be the decor on the top of my tin. And the second element um, I'm going to glue in um, inside and this is going to be a piece of the uh, icing paste skin I made before and you can see that in one of my videos. We are ready to start working on the inside and as a first step I'm going to go back to my clear gesso and I will give a good coat of it on the top of my metallic skin so it will be easier for me later to change the color of it. And here I would like to make dimensional composition and my main element I want to use is this old brush. I cut it shorter so it's going to fit in my tin 
and now I need to build some really cool surroundings for the brush. I love how rusty the background is, so I don't want to cover it completely. I've picked heavy body gel as the glue. This is super sticky, very, very heavy gel medium. And I've got a selection of different elements. I've got some of the mechanicals I created for Primo Marketing, and they are some mechanical parts. I've got uh, some of the leaves. They are beautiful and rusty, so I don't even need to paint them if I don't want to. I've got some flowers. These are the lotus flowers. Really cool set. I also have some uh, elements that I found. So for example, some rusty um, screws and other interesting elements. I've got uh, elements I made using my mold. So I've got the wings and this big mechanical part. This is all made from kind of uh, pouring clay. Uh, you can also use resin or any other uh, elements you like to use in the molds. I've got some uh, mechanical parts from Polish company Midform. They are flat and nice. It will be great for my background. And for extra dimension, I also have the cardboard if I need to lift something up. So my plan is to create a composition that is going to be around my brush. I would like to go maybe for some kind of flying brush effect. And as a first step, I'm going to glue these big parts of the cogs uh, in the background. So I'm putting a lot of heavy body gel and I will just press it down to make sure they're going to stay. I'm putting small pieces of cardboard to stick my wings easier to the background. So this is like extra dimension that is going to hold them in just in place. I'm putting a lot of gel medium on my brush. I really want it to stay in place. And the same happens with the wings. This is the main body of my composition. Now I will be adding nice elements and embellishments to fill it and to create something really cool. I've got some rusty elements and I've got some flowers here. Let's try to work with these to create really cool composition. I found this rusty part that may sit really nicely in this composition. Let's think about adding some other elements. What I love about uh, creating in this style is um, finding things that nobody wants and turning them into art. You don't have to use real um, expensive elements. You can uh, just find things that you like because of the shape or the texture and you can turn them in whatever you like. Like now I'm turning them into my mysterious embellishments. When you create elements, uh, sorry, compositions like that, it's good to have a lot of different elements on hand so you can pick and choose and fill the spaces the way you like. What I think I can do now, I can add some extra details on the other side. And this is ready for drying, so I will use my heat gun and I will make sure that everything here is completely dry. In the meantime, when my project is drying, I can uh, take a white gesso again and put a nice coat of it on the top of my front lace and let it dry as well. This is going to make my gluing and my painting a little bit easier. I'm taking again the 
clear gesso and I will cover all of the metal and resin embellishments with the coat so it will be much easier for me to add any color to it if I want to. That will turn everything matte. The surface is dry. We can start working on the colors and because we've got a um, plan to follow the natural color palette of the background and to make it really look uh, steampunk and rusty, I will start with three colors of acrylic paint. These are Art Alchemy metallic colors and this is brass hardware, steampunk copper and I also got a little bit darker uh, rustic brown. I will try to use these to recolor my project a little bit. I don't want to cover too much of this background, but I need to uh, color this one uh, completely. And now I'm going to use the same colors to add a bit of the background color to my embellishments on the other side of the composition as well. So I'm adding this kind of random way just to make sure that all the white and all the colors which are not really metallic are covered. I'm taking my water and I will spray it a little bit so this metallic color is going to be half transparent. It's going to come off a little bit and this way I will see more of the natural color of my uh, embellishments, I will just make sure that my wings are repainted the way I want it. The surface is almost ready for next steps. It's very monochromatic now, very metallic, and I would love to introduce a little bit of the color, a little bit of the contrast. So first of all, I'm going to use a tiny bit of white gesso to highlight, especially my uh, brush. This is the most important, the focal point here. So I will take just a little bit of this gesso and I will start adding just one delicate coat. This will help me add the extra pop of colors on the top of it if I will decide to do so. This is my focal point. This is the most important part of the composition. So I want to make sure that it will be clearly visible and the colors will be just beautiful. Next thing I'm going to do, I would like to add some texture. So I've got my soft gel here and I'm going to add a tiny bit of art stones. These are very delicate um, textures, similar to the stones. And they just look like this. And because they are white and neutral, I can add them at any time. But I prefer this time to keep them uh, for the last steps of my project because they will be more crisp and crisp and more visible They look really nice now I tap off the excess and I will clean that a little bit as well If I want to I can add some of these textures pretending this is a very very old plate My textures are dry, so now I can work more on the colors. And I am planning just to use acrylic paints and um, add the touches to the brush, to the uh, other side of the lid and also to the front. The colors I'm going to use will be my liquid acrylics and they are really versatile paints, transparent, well, translucent, glossy finish, very, very highly pigmented. I'm just going to play with these colors. I'm starting with browns. 
I'm just going to add a bit of antiquing using my paints. I'm going to add also some reds, adding the black as well. Black is always great for background textures. Now I'm going to switch to the smaller brush and I will be now more careful about the application. This is the result we have so far. I can play a little bit more with the colors now. I can add uh, more of the colors that I think I'm missing. So I will probably go for more of the purple. Now I have the feeling that the, the colors get a little bit too dark. So I'm coming back to my white dresser and I will dry brush a little bit of the white dresser in the middle of my project again. And now the last application of the paint, just to make sure this is exactly what I wanted to get. Now, when I'm more or less happy with the colors I've got inside, I can switch to the front part of my project. I would like to add a tiny bit of the colors corresponding with what I've got inside. So I'm going to add metallic paints again. And now I'm back to my liquid acrylics taking shades of rusty and brown. The top looks really beautiful and rusty. I would like to use some uh, metal elements on the top and I love their natural color so I will need to introduce a bit of green around it as well I will just first glue the elements down using my heavy body gel and then once they are secure on the top I can always add a bit more of my color there's also this beautiful sentence art is the answer and I will put it below as my title. Again, I am coming back to my brushes and I'm taking a tiny bit of this green color. This is the one that is corresponding nicely with the color of the cog. And then a bit of shades of brown as well. For now I just need to work on the final touches. I will splatter some of the black paint to create more dynamic look. I keep using the same liquid acrylic so the top of my turn is ready and I absolutely love it. It is more than I expected and I have to tell you I know these are my products, but they keep surprising me. Now, for the insides, I need a little bit of the highlights on the top of my uh, skin texture, and I would be adding a tiny bit of the highlight over the metal embellishment. I'm going to use uh, um, Art Alchemy Metallic <laughs> Old Silver Wax to add the highlights, and I think I'm going to combine it with 
a bit of the rich copper as well. So I think my project is ready and I absolutely love the result. This is going to be something special I can put on my shelf. And this was just a very simple tin, but now it turned into beautiful work of art. And as you can see, using acrylic paints, using gesso, found objects, maybe a tiny bit of uh, metallic finishes such as wax and textures uh, such as sand or art stones, you can get really, really cool re results. So I hope you are going to experiment and you're going to play with it and um, you're going to find some cool containers in your kitchen or in your garage and just see where this is going to take you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you feel inspired. Don't forget to visit um, other channels of my super talented design team members and join our hop if you would like to win. Remember to read all the instructions because there is a giveaway included. So if you'd like to be the lucky winner, you have to follow the steps.